We don't like to hear that. Mm-mm. We don't like to hear that. Because we think because we we don't read the Bible that we're not going to be held accountable. That's a lie. You just going to be deceived. <laughs> That's it. But you still going to make your way to that place. Let's try. Let's go to John chapter 13, two. John chapter 13, verse 2. And during supper, the devil having, having already put into the heart of Judas, the son of Simon, to betray him. John chapter 13, I'm starting from 1. I'm starting from 13. Now therefore the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of, out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of his son, to betray him. You gotta understand that the enemy is the only person that is the betrayal. He's the only one that betrays people. So when you have a heart of betrayal in you, a heart of trickery, all these things that you're doing, you are now have allowed the spirit of, of, of the enemy to intervene. And we gotta understand that I was telling my daughter, you know, she's on the prayer line, she was telling me, she said, Mom, you know, sometimes I be feeling da 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 And I went to her, I said, the devil don't want you to encourage nobody, prophesy nobody, or build nobody up. He always wants you to tear somebody down, lie to somebody, and cause trickery. He always looking for gossip. He always looking for back talk. Someone's acting like we don't know what's going on, but we really know what's going on, but we playing the game. Keep playing the game if you want to. We need to understand today that we got to stop, start being serious with God and stop playing yeah. with the devil. He's not playing with you. He don't care for you. He wants you to come up here and tell the lies. He wants you to come up here and live double lives in the, in the ministry. But do you know there's a set time? Woo. For even for, for blessings, there's a set time for that, that, that which you sow to reap. Mm. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on, come on. Verse 4. Verse 2, during supper, when the devil had already put it, to, put it into the heart of Judas, Simon son to betray him. Verse 3, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garment and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Verse 5, then he poured out water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, what I am doing, you do not understand. Now, but afterward, afterward, you will understand. Verse 8, and Peter said to him, you should never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Verse 9, Simon Peter said to him, Lord, my not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Verse ten, Jesus said to him, "The one who has the one who has bathed does not need to wash, except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but every one of you." But verse eleven, for he for he too he was to betray him. That's what excuse me, I don't like this read. That was why he said, "Not all of you are clean." We got to understand that. The enemy don't care as long as you betray. But Jesus knew who he was. Do you know who you are? Are you really on God's team? Because you can't come up in the ministry and you're sitting there telling them lies and living a double life thinking nobody see you. Who team are you really on? We don't have time. We don't have time. This is not a condemnation message. This is being real. Stop lying. We better if you don't say nothing than to sit up there and lie. To sit up there and let the enemy use your mouth. To sit up and talk and say things. God is so gracious. We don't have time. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. But the spirit. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. But the spirit. The spirit says that in later times some will fall away from the faith. Paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. Here we go. Seducing spirits, deceitful spirits, and doctrines of demons. We got to understand today that there's spirits running rapid out here, guys. And they're trying to put tentacles all in your waist. So you look, you can go but so far and they pull you right on back. I'll be there, man, now. Let's read chapter 4, verse 1, 2, and 3. It says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in later times some will depart from the faith. 
by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits. Now stop right there. Devoting themselves. Devoting themselves. In other words, this is something you're doing on your own. This is something you, you are partaking in. This is something you choose to do. Oh, come on, somebody. I need y'all to work with me. Yeah. Why? Look, this is not condemnation. This is to let you know that we don't have time. And you got to put the work in because if you're not, you're going to be used by the enemy. Are you not? I don't know about you, but I walked out there and did outreach with y'all. And I saw the state of people. And this is why. Because we're devoting time. Read that again. Devoting what? Devoting themselves De to, to deceitful spirits. To deceitful spirits. Keep going. And teachings of demons. And teaching of demons. Keep going. Through the insincerity of lies. De through the insincerity of lies. Keep going. In uh, in so the insincerity of lies whose, con whose consciences are seared. Who consciences what? Are seared. Seared. Go ahead. Who forbid marriage. Who forbid marriage. Anytime somebody come up and says, we don't have time for this. You got to stand for what you believe in. You got to seal that thing. You can't keep letting the enemy come back to you telling you this, that, or the other. You got to make up in your mind, this is this and this is that. And there is no more. I'm not changing. This is what I'm standing on. I don't care how you look, how you sound, what you're talking about. This is what I have sealed in my mind. This is I've made up my mind. This is that. Yeah. Oh. And when you have not made up your mind, this is that. You have not sealed with the blood of Jesus. You're not covering yourself with the blood. You're not fighting the good of faith. The enemy coming with deception. We don't have time to be in the ditch. We've got to be soaring. Keep reading that God. Who forbid marriage and require abstinence. Who forbid marriage and what? Require abstinence from foods that God created to be received. Listen to this. And we think we, it's fun you meet people, uh, and then they don't eat certain food. Oh, they just spiritual. Sweetheart, they're not spiritual, they're demon possessed. And we're falling for it because they might got a little six pack and they slim. So they eat right in, but they don't know how to pray or bind or rebuke anything. We gotta be careful. Good. All these women coming in from all these different countries and ooh, and they skin in their hair, but they serve an idol God. All right. And we wonder why our kids acting the way they acted. We better have eyes to see and ears to hear what God is saying in this hour. I was listening to this man. This man, I like to call this man. I like stand up comedy. I'm guilty. I do. And he was saying, "Y'all better not fall for them looks at big booty and small waist." Yeah, they foreign with all this pretty hair, blah, blah, blah. And I'm not knocking foreigners, but if they don't believe in God, you better run. But some of us, we got we have made a covenant with our eyes or our body parts. And the enemy is the he, he wants you to sit just sit up here. As long as you don't really serve, don't seek. Don't, don't seek his rights, don't seek the kingdom. Ooh, my goodness. I'm in the house because this is what God told me. Come on, God. Please. This is where I fetch from foods that God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For everything created by God is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received Amen. with thanksgiving. Yeah. Keep going. For it is made by, it is made holy by the word of God and prayer. It has made, it's been made holy and now we know that we do things uh, in moderation so we understand that. But we got to understand is that I want you to recognize that we don't have time because see what is happening is people are marrying people that's not of the faith and bring them to church and want us to cast out demons and pray for them when they don't even believe in the same God that you believe in. We need, we don't have time. That's wasting time that you can be out there ministering and reaching people for God's glory. But now we got to sit and get you and him delivered. Uh, we don't have time for this. We don't have no time for ministers fighting against each other, lying on each other, putting their mouth on each other. We don't have time to be obeying novelists when we're teaching you the word so you can become mature in the things of God. We don't have time because you are stagnating because you decide to sin over God righteousness. Somebody else. Somebody else. Second Corinthians verse 11, verse 3.
Hallelujah. The primary battlefield is time, and the enemy knows it. And if we're not careful, we sit there, we don't know if we're healed, we don't know if we're man, we don't know if we're woman. We ain't got time for that. Make up your mind. Second yeah. Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I am afraid that as the serpent perceived Eve by his cunning. I'm afraid. Look at this now. I'm afraid, but I am afraid least the serpent that deceived Eve by his craftiness. I'm afraid. He's afraid for us that we that we won't be deceived by the craftiness of this world. Keep going. Your thoughts will be led astray. Your thoughts, your mind will be led astray. Some of us are like, it don't take much for us to stray off the path. I'll never forget when God gave the word for a woman of God. I was still in Rome. And I said, woman of God, there's something coming. Be prepared. Stay in the house of God. Stay committed. It didn't take nothing. That person came into her life and she walked right on away. Y'all better understand that the enemy don't care. You better get your loneliness in check. You better get your desperation in check. You better get the addictions in check. Get these things in check or the enemy coming for it for a set time. Ooh, I hear the Holy Spirit. You uh, think it just because it ain't happened to you yet. Baby, if you keep tampering into sin, you keep tampering to these addictions, you keep tampering to these things, it's going to hold you back. This includes me. This one excludes me. This includes me. Matter of fact, I think he gave me the word before I gave it to y'all. Keep reading, man of God. Since your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to your Christ. Your thoughts will be led astray. Keep going. Your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. But if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus. Woo! If someone comes to proclaim another Jesus, if it's not in the word, what are you falling for? What are you believing? What are you playing with? God says sorcery is demonic. It's open to not the demonic portals. What are you playing with it? That's serving another God. That's Satan. But we're touching it. Then we want to say, you know what? I, mean, I did that church thing. I did that building thing. And it's not working. Not if you're going to serve God and man. We don't have time. Keep going. It proclaims another Jesus than the one we proclaim. Then the one that we proclaim. Keep going. Or if you receive a different spirit from the one you receive. Ooh, and if you receive a what? Different spirit. A different spirit. You mean to tell me there's more than one spirit? Yes, it is. Right. It ain't just the Holy Spirit good. running around here. It's good. It's good. And some of us ain't got the Holy Spirit. Come on. That's why it don't take nothing for us to act the fool. It don't take nothing for us to get in sin. It don't take nothing for us to lie. If you can sit there and lie to an apostle, like, I don't know you lying to me. All right. That's another spirit. And we better get woke in here. We better stop playing with this spirit. Because he's not playing with us. The Bible says he's true. Keep reading, man of God. Mm, receive a different spirit from the one you received. Or if you accept a different gospel mm. from the one you accepted, you put up with it readily enough. Mm. Listen, accept, accept a different gospel. You know, don't get me wrong. I believe that everybody got something that they need to be delivered from. And it's amazing to me. Uh, when I got married to my husband. He's not the perfect person, but I knew what I was going into when I got married to him. But it's amazing that we can see, everybody can see my husband, but they can't see theirs. Yeah. It's amazing <laughs> to me that they can see his demon, but they can't see their own. Let's talk about it. Something wrong with him, but ain't nothing wrong with you. Something wrong with him. What's wrong with you? <laughs> familiar, like to call him familiar. So what's going on? Why are we fighting this fight? Why are we not unifying to seek deliverance? I was driving down the road yesterday, and what came to me was like, the Lord was like, uh, familiar demons. And I said, Lord, familiar demons. And he said, friendship. We choose a friendship over righteousness. You my friend. Well, I'm going go along with you even though you're wrong. We better wait for we better wait. That's good. That's good, Apostle. If I'm wrong, please tell me. Come on now. Don't sit there Come and on now. Like, Apostle, listen, I know what you're saying, but blah, 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 blah. We better stop this. We, have, we don't have time. That's why you got 
churches with five, ten people in each church. Because we, 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 we fight against each other. You know if you're deliverance. If you don't even believe in speaking in tongues, you know you're not deliverance. So why are we playing with it? If you don't believe in that, and you're not even encouraging that, pushing that, just because your kids don't get it, that don't mean that the world can't have it. So we're going to hinder one group because your group ain't got it. This is what we ask. <laughs> Let's go. Possibly mad. I'm just trying to understand. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. Stop deriving one another, except by agreement for a time that you may devote yourself to pray and come together against these Satan tempted because of your lack of self-control. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. When you get the man of God, let me know. We gotta understand. Stop coming in agreement with things that are not right. No, you ain't gotta call everything up, but pray. But get off the phone with these lying demons. Get off the phone with people that's coming against what you know is right. Don't be going, yeah, I know. Don't, don't be mad. Mm, come on. Stop being timid with these Satanists. Stop being timid. Tell people the truth. Tell that's them the word mean. of God. Yes. In a way, you won't come to me and tell me, you should try sorcery. Boy, by the time I get the phone with you, baby, you won't even want them to do it. <laughs>
Because we're not running. We just give it in. We're not even putting a fight. And then when you look, we get better at hiding. You're not, you're not hurting nobody. You're hurting yourself. Come on, read it now. It says, therefore, when we could bear it no longer, we were willing to be left behind at Athens alone. Mm. And when we sent Timothy, our brother, and God's co-worker in the gospel of Christ, to be established and exhort you in your faith that no one be moved by these afflictions. Now listen to this. In the TKS and in ministries, you're going to be one that go out here and you represent BTKS because you represent God most of all but the ministry. So when you out there, amen, what you do matters. Amen. That's right. What you say matters. Yes. What you connect to matters. You gotta understand that the importance of the way you carry yourself. So if you broke down, you still why are you still connecting with people you know that's not for you? Mm, that's good. Come on now. Why are you entertaining that conversation? What is it that they're doing for you? They're feeding your flesh. Yeah. And they prefer it, what makes you, and they give you word that it's the spirit that comes with the word. <laughs> I'm trying to ask you. Come on now. Yeah. No. Teaching. I'm, I'm trying to understand how many times we've got to go through this till you say, you know, enough is enough. And yes, we all have, listen, there's seasons we all have fight with our flesh. I'm a apostle, but, but I fought with my flesh. Okay? But I didn't run to it, I ran to God. And how do you fight? How do you stand? You have to stay in prayer. You have to stay in fasting. That's something that don't come up with fasting and prayer. I don't care. Listen, I stay in my fast when I was single. I stay, Lord Jesus. I could eat. I was like, Rosa, you just lose some weight. They didn't even know if I was fast and stay over. I was fast and stay righteous. I was fast and it seemed like the devil had my, I felt like he had my, my skirt tail. And I'm like, okay, what is it? Is it a blizzard? And <laughs> it's the season. And I had to stay on that fast so that if, it, if it, he wasn't trying to play with my mind, he was trying to play with my vision. If he wasn't trying to play with my vision, he was trying to play with my heart. So I had, to, I had to stay on that fast so I could stay in line with God's mm. will of my life. Yes. And I'm telling you, that's what's going to take it. Those who desire to truly be celibate, that's what it's going to take. Mm -hmm. Those who truly desire to be holy, sanctified, walk in power, miracle sign, that's what it's going to take. Amen? Amen. Don't, don't look at me. Because I might eat something. That don't mean you need to eat something. You need to, you need to use your discretion. Because you know where you are. You know the miracles you need. Oh, come on, somebody. Yes. Take your eye off man. Man can't get you where God can get you. I'm not here to be your God. I'm here to be, to be your God. Come on. To guide you to the Lord. Come on. That's it. Okay? But at the end of the day, you know what God is telling you? Amen. You better obey God. Walking around here looking for the next pastor, the next prophet, to prophesy to you what? When you got the whole body. Not wrong with a good prophecy. You don't want one. But guess what? I don't want a prophecy if it ain't coming from God. That's it. That's it. That's it. Now I even look for that. I said, wow, God. And people out here telling lies. Well, what would you say that? Ooh. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. We almost done here, y'all guys. I don't want you long today. 2 Thessalonians. Chapter 3, verse 5. Isn't that what I said? You said second oh, sorry. 2 Corinthians, Corinthians. Chapter 4. Verse 4. All right, man. Go. All right. <laughs> and it says, in their case, the God of this world has blinded the In mind. their case, in their case, the God of mm. this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving. That they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God. How many people do you see that are blinded? Today we hope that blinded eyes be open. Yes. Amen. That they might see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. Yes, sir. But guess what? There are a lot of people walking around here that they're blinded. That they can't see. Sometimes I'm 
concerned about parents because their eyes are more on their kids than their eyes on God. That do you not know that God wants to raise our kids in the ammunition of the Lord? Yes. Do you not know that drugs and all these things is keeping people's eyes blind that they can't see? So today, I'm telling you, you gotta wake up. We don't have time on our side. I know people have been saying it. I know we make it seem like that, the way people are living and jolly. And look, we're gonna celebrate uh, holidays too. But it says here in John chapter 8, verse 44, you go back in the meantime, John chapter 8, verse 44, you are the fathers, look, you are of your father the devil, and you want to do the desires of the father. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he does not stand in truth, because there's no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature, for he's a liar and a father of lies. You got to understand, when you sit there telling them lies, you have a lot of that spirit to enter. Revelation 12 and 9, the great dragon, this is the one that got me, the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old, who is called the devil and Satan, who, deceive, who deceives the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. That's Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. You've got to understand that there were entertaining the angels of the east. you got to understand, that's why you see uh, uh, demonic things so because he is in the world, he's in the earth, he's in the world, and so is his angels, and they look like us. All right. So you gotta have the world on the inside so you can discern who you're talking to. There's some people, there are look, we got the son of perdition, but we got some people that sin solely from their father, the devil. And he's here to stop any movement or progression of Christ. And he wanted to think that him and God, one of the things that God in common is vessels. So he don't care if you walk up in here. He just don't want you to be changed. He don't want you to be delivered, and he don't want you to be set free. Are we getting this this morning? Yeah. You know, sometimes I see here, I'll be saying to myself, I said, Lord God, I don't want to sound redundant. I said, God, you can give me the same message. He said, I'm just because I need my people to wake up. I need my people to understand that there are people who are dying and going to hell. And we sit up and we give these nice, you know, uh, rhetorical, yeah. when they die, Come we on. say, oh, oh, they went to heaven. But the Bible says, if you don't believe that I died, oh, right. if you don't receive me, if you don't Come repent on. of your sins. I got a story for you. I, it's a story that, that was written in this article, and I took it out because I wanted y'all to hear it. It said, I remember a dear Christian woman who was once, who, oh, excuse me, I remember a dear Christian woman who once came to me to confess a problem. She said that whenever she prayed, she found that blasphemous thoughts and, 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 swear, me, and swear words would come to her mind. Like this every time she would pray. She was one of the sweetest, kindest, dearest, most dedicated women in the church. And that's why I know you can come here every Sunday, show me every Bible study, be the biggest tie, be the biggest devil. I hate to say it, but it's true. She was the one of the sweetest, kindest, dearest, most dedicated women in our church. Yet, she had a problem with terrible thoughts. Anybody in here today that every time you're trying to do right, these thoughts come to your mind. I explained to her that those thoughts did not originate within her, but that she was being attacked by the enemy. Some of us don't want to admit that we're being attacked. I remember me and my daughter, when she first started coming to the ministry, she said, Mom, for some reason, every Sunday, an angel will raise up, will raise up in me every time, every Sunday coming. You remember that? But she, but I started praying and asking the Lord to reveal it to her. And she told me one day, she said, I knew it was the devil. And the Lord began to show me that the enemy wanted me to work against you instead of with you. we got to understand today that the enemy will attack you because he don't want you to work to a unity, because the Bible says he endeavor, endeavor to keep the unity, he will bless it. But if you're not a one accord, you're not keeping the unity. You can sit there and fake all you want, smile and talk this way, but God sees your heart. And when a ministry, when, a, when God is ready to do something great in a ministry, what do you try to do to divide, look, divide and separate the conquer? If I can get you thinking this, if I can get you thinking that, get you saying this, get you talking that, and then you whisper into that other person there because they're not strong enough, they believe in it. Be careful. So he began to explain to her that those thoughts did not originate within her, but she was being attacked by Satan, who was attempting to ruin her prayer life. Look at this. They don't care, he just don't want you to have a prayer life. 
So he'll, 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 he'll keep reminding you of the offense or something your family need or your parent did. Well, they did this to me. They made me go to church every Sunday. So now I'm not going to go. The enemy don't care. He just don't want you to serve him and fully be dedicated. So then he told, then she, then she told me she had stopped praying every day because she was afraid she might think those thoughts again. Satan has succeeded. Have you ever been in a situation where I'm not going to church no more? I'm not praying no more. I'm not supporting the apostle. No because the enemy, all he wants, he wants you angry. He wants you in un unforgiveness. He wants to bring your, your uh, he wants to disturb you. He wants to cause you to not be blessed. He don't want you to be cool. Come up here and dress good and look nice and put your makeup on in your suit as long as you don't have victory. This is what the enemy wants, guys. We don't have time for this. The primary battlefield is time. And what you do with your time is going to matter. So I told her to start, start praying again. And those thoughts came back to her. She should contra contract them with the truth. Truth of God's word. If the thought said her Jesus was just a boy, she should say, no, Jesus was and still is the son of God. We got to understand that we got to replace all this negativity, all these negative thoughts, all these habits with the word of God, the will of God. How do you do that? I want to be telling me about how do I do that? By fasting and praying. Yes. Then some of us think that we can uh, not do that part and it's going to work. It's not going to work. You got to put the work in. You got to put the work in. Man, word of God. You can't expect a part. Possibly can only do a part. You have to do your part. Amen. In this world we're living in now, people are, the enemy is constantly, I see it all the time, reminding people of their past. If I can get you to stay in 1996, if I can get you to stay in 2001, if I can get you to stay there, you'll never be free. If I can get you to stay in that car accident, if I can get you to stay in your old church where there was no miracles, so you won't receive the miracles where you at. If I can get you now back to the present anointing, because you still hold on to the old. This is what we don't have time. This is the primary benefit. Are we getting this this morning? Amen. I know it sounds harsh, but you gotta understand. Don't think. Listen to this. I read this the other day and I wrote it down. It says, Don't think about your right hand. You immediately think about your right hand as you attempt to obey me. The harder you try, the worse it gets. The only way not to think about your right hand is to constantly, look, consciously think about something else. For example, your shoe. Once you have your mind on your shoe, you are not thinking about your hand. I remember I had on, I had on something, and I had a stain. That was last Sunday, right? Now nobody seen the stain, but my mind was on that stain. So then I point out the stain. I see the stain. They ain't seen the boy. Ain't seen it. You said this is how the enemy do. He wants you to warn him. He wants you to hone in to the worst. Nothing good about Sister says, but everything negative she says. Nothing, no good character she has, but the one negative thing that she might not have good character. This is how the enemy does. He wants to play on our mind so we won't have victory. Because he knows the Bible says, touch not my anointed do my prophet no harm. He knows every time you touch me or any anointed one, you're doing harm. And it's hindering you. Today, I want you to know, we don't have time. Amen. You need to truly want victory, get victory, and if you don't have it, be quiet to you. Amen. That's good. You know, lately, guys, we've been about thoughts, what we think about, what we put our time on. You know, pray and release. Pray and release. Pray for and release. There's some valuable numbers I've learned in my uh, growing up in the gospel. And one of the things that uh, my spiritual mom used to say to me, she said, under wear people as kid gloves. You gotta start wearing people as kid gloves. You gotta start deciding to not allow them to get here because you lose the battle. You gotta decide to wear thoughts that are not of God like kid gloves. You gotta say, you know what? Maybe she can teach me something. The God's of age, I am. Maybe we can learn from one another. Amen. Amen. We gotta be open. We got, we got people believing that women don't preach. 
Is that going to help you get to heaven or hell? At the end of the day, your whole goal is to get to heaven because hell was created for us. All right. So it doesn't matter who presents the gospel as long as you get it. But this is what's happening now. And we're in an age now that we don't have time. This is the primary background that the enemy fights with us. If he can hold you up in that cage, if he can hold you up in that prison of your mind, if he can hold you up saying that I'm not good enough, I won't achieve, that's a lie from the enemy. Stand up today. Stand up, everyone. Amen. Glory be to God. Thank you for joining Brother King with the Supernatural. I pray that you be set free. I pray today that you release everything that's not of God. I pray that you receive the goodness of God. I pray that you have the mind of Christ. Today, if you like to sow into the ministry, you can do so. You can catch up at the dollar sign, Supernatural BTPS, or you can go on the Facebook page and donate. Every donation that you give, we help family and we help our hallelujah, our country. God bless you. We love you. Living purpose is what's on purpose. Come on, let's be God.